Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about serotonin and melatonin synthesis. So in this lesson we're going to talk about what serotonin and melatonin is actually produced from. We're going to talk about step-by-step -step, um, process by which serotonin and melatonin are synthesized. We're going to talk about enzymes that are involved in their synthesis and we're going to talk about important cofactors and vitamins that are required in their synthesis. So to begin, serotonin is also known as 5-hydroxytryptamine and it is a monoamine neurotransmitter. It's derived from the amino acid tryptophan. We'll talk about tryptophan in a little bit. So serotonin has functions in various systems within the body. One of those is in the central nervous system. It's involved with uh, mood, appetite, and sleep regulation. It's also important in the gastrointestinal system and in bone metabolism as well. So it regulates GI motility and bone metabolism. Now for melatonin, melatonin is also known as N-acetyl-5-methoxytryptamine and it's produced by the pineal gland and it itself regulates sleep and wakefulness. Now melatonin is a hormone and it is important in synchronizing the circadian rhythm. And melatonin itself is produced from serotonin. Now, with regards to tryptophan, we mentioned that tryptophan is an amino acid, but tryptophan is actually an essential amino acid, and it's an essential amino acid in humans. So that means that we have to get it from our diet. So some of the dietary sources of tryptophan include chocolate, milk, chickpeas, red meat, fish, and poultry. So many different um, foods that have protein in them actually contain tryptophan. So you might hear, oh, turkey has tryptophan or chocolate. These are a couple of common, commonly known sources of tryptophan. Now, if we get tryptophan from our diet, uh, from a dietary source, like we mentioned before, tryptophan can be acted on by the enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase. Now, tryptophan hydroxylase requires a cofactor known as tetrahydrobiopterin. It also requires an oxygen molecule as well. Now, tryptophan hydroxylase can act on tryptophan to produce 5-hydroxytryptophan. And in the process, it actually um, processes tetrahydrobiopterin into dihydrobiopterin. So if we look at the chemical structure of 5-hydroxytryptophan and tryptophan, we see an important distinction. So this hydroxyl group is added to carbon 5 of tryptophan. So this tryptophan hydroxylase reaction simply adds a hydroxyl group to the tryptophan to form 5-hydroxytryptophan. Hydro now dihydrobiopterin itself can then be recycled, can be recycled by the enzyme dihydrobiopterin reductase or DHB reductase. It utilizes an NADPH and NADPH is oxidized to NADP+, and in the process, dihydrobiopterin is recycled back into tetrahydrobiopterin. So what's important to note from this step is that a hydroxyl group is added to tryptophan. It requires tetrahydrobiopterin as a cofactor, and dihydrobiopterin, the product of tetrahydrobiopterin, can actually be recycled with an NADPH um, utilizing the enzyme DHB reductase, NADPH comes from the pentose phosphate pathway. Now, once we have 5-hydroxytryptophan, it can be acted on by the enzyme aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase. So that means, as its name suggests, it actually decarboxylates the 5-hydroxytryptophan. It removes a carbon dioxide. So when it removes a carbon dioxide from 5-hydroxytryptophan, it actually becomes 5-hydroxytryptamine. So where does this carbon dioxide actually come from? Well, it actually comes from this portion of 5-hydroxytryptophan. So this carboxyl group is removed, leaving us with 5-hydroxytryptamine. And 5-hydroxytryptamine is actually serotonin. So in two steps, we can process tryptophan into serotonin or 5-hydroxytryptamine and um, these two steps require a hydroxylation step and a decarboxylation step.
and this enzyme of aromatic L amino acid decarboxylase requires an important cofactor known as pyridoxal phosphate, which is an active form of vitamin B6. So this enzymatic step requires vitamin B6. So once we have 5-HT or serotonin, it can be acted on by the enzyme serotonin and acetyltransferase. Now, this enzyme requires acetyl-CoA as a cofactor, and when serotonin and acetyltransferase acts on 5-hydroxytryptamine, as its name suggests, it actually transfers an acetyl group from acetyl-CoA. This leaves us with coenzyme A and hydrogen ion as byproducts. The acetyl group from acetyl-CoA actually gets added on to 5-hydroxytryptamine, actually gets attached to the uh, nitrogen group here. So we see here now this acetyl group is attached to the 5-hydroxytryptamine, giving us N-acetyl serotonin, which is also known as normelatonin. So in essence, the acetyl-CoA acts as acetyl group donor. The serotonin N-acetyl transferase simply takes an acetyl group from acetyl-CoA adds it on to 5-hydroxytryptamine and gives us N-acetyl serotonin or normelatonin. Once we have normelatonin, it can be acted on by the enzyme N-acetyl serotonin O-methyltransferase. This step requires an important cofactor known as S-adenosylmethionine or SAN. Now, this enzyme actually transfers a methyl group and what it does is it actually transfers a methyl group from from s methionine to N-acetyl serotonin. It actually adds it on this hydroxyl group here. So you can see here that this is an added methyl group. This leaves us with the byproduct s homocysteine. So when, when we actually donate the methyl group from SAM, we get s homocysteine. That methyl group gets added to this hydroxyl group. This leaves us with melatonin or N-acetyl-5-methoxytryptamine. So this is a very important step because it requires this very important cofactor known as s methionine or SAM. We've learned about this before in other previous lessons whereby this um, cofactor gets generated from the activated methyl cycle. So in essence, when we get this s homocysteine byproduct, it can be recycled through the activated methyl cycle to form s methionine once again, which can be used for um, other processes. So now that we've gone over the entire pathway, let's review the pathway once again to make sure we, we remember the important steps and important cofactors in this pathway. So the first step of the pathway involves the enzyme tryptophan hydroxylase acting on tryptophan. This is a hydroxylation step it requires the cofactor tetrahydrobiopterin, and this step essentially um, adds a hydroxyl group to trips, trip, tryptophan. The next step involves uh, the enzyme aromatic amino acid decarboxylase acting on 5-hydroxytryptophan. This is a decarboxylation reaction, and it involves the enzyme pyridoxal phosphate, which is an active form of vitamin B6 and this reaction removes a carbon dioxide group. The next step in the reaction involves the enzyme serotonin N-acetyltransferase acting on 5-hydroxytryptamine or 5-HT. This is an acetylation reaction. It um, requires the cofactor acetyl coenzyme A. Um, this essentially um, acts as an acetyl group donor. So acetyl-CoA acts as an acetyl group donor. It donates an acetyl group to 5-hydroxytryptamine to form N-acetyl serotonin. Now coenzyme A is a derivative of vitamin B5 or pantothenate. So this is an important distinction also that um, is important to know that we require vitamin B5 for this reaction to take place as well. And the last step involves the enzyme N-acetylserotonin O-methyltransferase. So this reaction is a methylation reaction. So it actually adds a methyl group to N-acetylserotonin to form melatonin. 
This requires the cofactor S-adenosyl methionine or SAM. And S-adenosyl methionine um, actually acts as the methyl group donor in this reaction. It takes a methyl group and it adds it to normelatonin to form melatonin. So there's a few things I want you to remember from this pathway. One is that we require vitamin B6 for the synthesis of serotonin and melatonin. We require vitamin B5 in the form of coenzyme A for the synthesis of melatonin. And we require methionine, the amino acid methionine, in the form of s methionine for the production of melatonin once again. So there's a few things we need from this entire pathway, vitamin B6, vitamin B5, and methionine. So thank you so much for watching. That was a lesson on serotonin and melatonin synthesis. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.